Do you stand up for what you believe? Do you know that you are powerful? I'm trying to break you out of passivity by reminding you of what's in your spirit, man, and how strong your inner person is, how God has created you. Now, the key question is, how did we learn passivity? What are some of the causes of mental passivity? You see, when we understand these causes, we know what to guard our hearts from, okay? One of the things is actually to do with birth order and how we were parented. If you're in an environment, it happens a lot with last borns, but it doesn't have to be a last born. Sometimes it happens with middle, a middle child and so on. You know, sometimes they become so passive because decisions were made for them. Decisions were made for them by older siblings that were domineering. Decisions were made for them by parents. Okay. I remember counseling a couple of uh, young girls and they were in a situation where they were experiencing social phobia. Right? They, was, they would struggle to speak out in certain situations. But what came up was that their mom would answer questions on their behalf. You know what I'm talking about. When a friend would come and say, Oh, so what sports are you girls doing now? And the mom comes in. Oh, they used to do tennis. Now they're doing ballet. What happens? Those girls became passive. I'm not good enough to answer. Mom will answer for me anyway. My older siblings will do it anyway. They're the ones who speak well. I don't. And you become passive. So it's important how we, how we parent our children. It's also really crucial if you're on the receiving end to become conscious of it and to say, have I become passive? Have I become lazy mentally? Because, oh, my husband will do all the speaking for me. Oh, my husband will explain that. Or my wife will do that for me. She's the one who likes that kind of thing, right? Uh, media. I'm talking about television and computer games. We know about this. Research has been carried out that actually shows this very clearly, that when children spend so much time watching television, playing computer games, their minds become dulled, their minds become passive, and it actually affects them. It affects them uh, academically also, okay? Drugs. I don't need to go deep into this. At some point, I'll do, um, I'm going to do a whole uh, talk um, for, for some of our youth and some of our young people, and people in general, parents need to be aware of some of these things, but I'm telling you, we need to sort this out, you know? Um, out of every 100 people you see in South Africa, 15 of them have got a drug problem, okay? Out of every 100 rand that's circulating, that's in circulation, 15 rand is used in substance abuse, okay? We've got a problem. Communities are being wiped out because of this. And let me tell you something, when drugs come in, it's not a case of hey, try this, it's going to cook your brains, it's going to fry your brains, it's going to destroy your life. You know, no one says that to you. It's just little by little. Hey, come and have a bit of fun. Hey, come, you need this to relax. Pain seeks pleasure, right? So uh, drugs are a biggie. Demonic activity and ancestral worship, right? When people expose themselves to ancestral worship, right? You're not communicating to your ancestors. Those things that are manifesting are actually demonic spirits, familiar spirits, that are pretending to be your ancestor. If the devil just comes and says, oh, I'm a demon over here, come and talk to me. People wouldn't do that. That's why he comes uh, as an angel of light and deceives many. So demonic activity and ancestral worship, watch out for that. Uh, a domineering authority figures in your life, okay? Um, escapism, that's another biggie. A lot of times people who experienced pain in their lives as they were growing up, right? The way they would try to escape from that pain was by detachment. And some of that detachment is mentally, where they'll just block you out, block people out, and they literally won't be listening, won't be hearing what you're saying. You hear some people saying, the moment someone raises their voice, I literally shut down, I switch off, okay? It's a defense mechanism, right? So escapism and fantasy can cause passivity of the mind, right? Uh, trauma, right? When people have been raped, when people have been abused in various ways, they literally shut down a part of themselves, right? But then they become passive. Remember, part of passivity is where you're passive emotionally. You're not feeling anything, okay? You're completely numb, right? That's why we talk about mental passivity, but there's also emotional passivity. You don't respond to anything. People say, hey, I'm so happy. I'm so excited. You know, I, I did so well in my test. I got 90% and you can't feel anything. You see, sometimes people numb themselves from pain, but you can't compartmentalize numbing. So when you numb yourself from pain, often you're also numbing yourself from joy.
Okay? Um, habitual sin without repentance is a source of passivity. It's when someone continues in sin and they know it's wrong and their conscience becomes seared and they become literally passive mentally. Okay? 